Johnson speaking to Sam Watrous. Sam, what are we looking at here? I mean, I know it's a Werner sure. brand, and that's a quite a storied engine brand from Europe. Uh, but tell me what we're looking at here. Okay, so Werner Motors is out of the Czech Republic, and they're, they've been making radial engines for at least seven years, airplane engines for 30 years. Yeah, I don't know them to be a radial company. I've right. flown to their engines before, but they didn't look anything like this. So, Right, they have a full line now of radial engines. They have seven-cylinder engines, two five-cylinder engines, and a three-cylinder engine for the small ultralights, the legal eagles, and that type of aircraft. Okay, so run me through all those uh, three through seven, uh, maybe with horsepower or something that kind of differentiates why, which one you'd pick for what kind of airplane. Sure. Uh, okay, so for the light, light end, we have a 42-horse takeoff-powered uh, three-cylinder. All their engines are direct drive, by the way, so they're all that low, throaty roar. We have in between these two is a brand-new five-cylinder and that's 70 horsepower. 70 horsepower, right. okay. Uh, to compete with the Rotex 912, they have an 82 horsepower five-cylinder engine. Uh, there's a 117 and a 137 seven-cylinder engines as well. Okay, quite a range then, 42 to 117 uh, horsepower like that. Tell me how they compare for weight to... Okay, so the weight on this is 152 pounds. All right, you'll also have an oil well, tank. It's pretty close to the Rotax, isn't it's, it? It's within the ballpark of a Rotax. Okay. It's 82 horsepower for takeoff. It's 78 continuous, and that's at 1,900 RPM oh, continuous. Wow. Really low RPM. Low, yeah. throaty roar. It's got a lot of torque, and that's where the radials really shine is okay, with torque. I was just going to ask, is that why radial, because of torque? Yeah, it's okay. torque and the noise. Everybody loves the radio. <laughs> it's true. There's a very, uh, I don't know if it's just a nostalgia thing or it's just a, a sound quality thing, but you're right. There's a right. there's something about a radio, and as your other customer there was saying, he's convinced. So <laughs> so what, what talks a person into deciding to use this kind of engine? And this is a home-built project then. Yes, these are uh, experimental engines. Their okay. whole family is experimental en okay. engines. So uh, somebody's designing an airplane or, or not, maybe, maybe building just from a kit or mm -hmm. something, most of the time, kit makers don't specify radial engines. So how does right. one? How does? How do you connect the dots there? To well, I've got such and so kit, and I'm building it. But you know what? I'd like to make it a radial. How sure. Do you, how do you? How do you get people together on that stuff? So we've been talking about that over the last few days here at Oshkosh sure. uh, with a lot of people. Um, basically, it comes down to the weight, the the center of mass, uh, the engine mount style, and so uh, because of the pattern for the the Verners, it should be relatively easy for most airplanes to adapt to their frame. Um, Meaning the motor mount part. The of motor it. mount okay. part of it. So right. you know. Right. All right. So we, we now we rotated the engine a little bit because we wanted to talk about. We, we talked about people approaching you and saying, "Well, I'm this or that project, and I want to build it." But right. how do they mount it to the airframe now? Okay. So the rundown on these motors is it's direct drive. It's working in the 18, 19. 100 RPM, 2,000 RPM so of range, low, I can't get right? Over that, but. Uh, so it has a throaty roar. It's fuel injected with a throttle oh, body okay. fuel injector. It's got an impeller. It's not a blower. It's not a supercharger, but it disperses the mixture properly out to each of the cylinders. It has electronic ignition with a built-in alternator up in the front end. Okay, okay. The alternator's up on the front. Right. I'm going to step in in front right. of the look at it. That's what this cable's coming back. Okay. So there's also a secondary ignition. It's a magneto for and timing for the uh, for the as a backup okay. on your and ignition. Okay, and it is a dual plug. I'm assuming. I don't. No, see this, it. Is this is a single plug as the okay. baseline. Dual is available. Ah, okay. But it's electronic ignition. You get a coil for every spark plug. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. So it's real modern. Yeah, electronics. you know, people look at a radial and think old-fashioned. So you know, right. old, clunky old parts or something. Here, everything right. you just mentioned is all very modern stuff. Absolutely. It's with a built-in. It's got a starter. They come uh, okay. test run uh, with the electronics that they send you, so you know exactly, you get a dyno reading, you get exactly what your engine will do. What are some typical questions they ask and what's your response to them? Well, let me pass this off to Frank because he's working with some fellows right now. Okay, good, all right. So Frank is the our prop expert here as well. We'll talk about that in a minute, but try the question I just posed there, Frank. Well, as far as the engine mount's concerned, uh, they need to be triangulated for strength because of the radial impulses instead of an opposed engine. There is a little how, bit how, of difference. What does that mean? 
Tell me what that phrase means or the impulse. Uh, what are they whenever, trying to when grapple you have with? The, when you have words? the firing of the cylinder, uh, it's it's you have on the five cylinder. They're going in five different directions, so we've got to triangulate the mount a little more and have a little more strength to keep it from shaking a lot. Okay, the the radio would have a tendency to want to do that because of its radial construction. Correct. Okay. At low RPM. At low RPM yes. is where that specifically comes in. Okay, I get it. All right, so tell me now. Uh, uh, the, the, I asked, uh, well, you know, what's a typical couple of questions that people say? Well, I'm not sure I'm supposed to do this. What would you tell them? What are those questions, and how would you answer them? Uh, well, we've gone through some development on the three-cylinder, uh, and we're being new dealers. We're in the process of developing the mounts. Ah, okay. All right. So, so people are going. All right. Love the engine, like the customer we, I talked about a moment ago, and I'm looking at the motor mount on that one. Let's go over to that one. In fact. Okay, we've now come over to the three-cylinder engine where I, the motor mount just looks more obvious to me. And I'm looking at this, uh, trying to look through the eye of a builder and going, okay, so the gray components that I see here, these light gray components, do I have to create this or do you create this or how do, how do we get to this point? We're developing this as a product that we can sell with the engines. Okay. And or the builder can design their own and build it. Do some people want to do it that some, way? Some yes, we would we can support or we can de uh, supply. Okay. But your longer term project is that you'll offer these available for those people that want them. Hopefully by the end of the year we'll be able to and offer that, that engine. Is that different for every airplane kind of thing? We'll or? need to know the mounting points and we'll have it jigged up to where we can adjust the back that. points here, the that hard points on the airframe. Correct. Okay. And then you can do the rest of this. Now, in, in many engines, I'm familiar with uh, sort of a, a process, uh, a dynafocal mount that points to the center of the engine. Is that also a fact for you? Well, uh, we've learning that with the three-cylinder, the 120 degrees off with each impulse of the firing made a difference on the mount. Is that right? How so? It, well, a conventional mount shakes, shakes like a wet dog. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good visual. Uh, what kind of airplane would typically use an engine like this? Where, oh, would it, where would it fit real well? Any of the old World War One replicas, any of the old plans built airplanes uh, would just look right with the radial engine. And uh, okay, so that includes, uh, we've done a lot of videos with Robert Bosley who I think he comes out with a new one every year. I don't know where he finds the time to do all this. I've heard some stories about how hard the guy works, but he's always got another one, and your engines are perfect on them. But do other people want them as more conventional kits, let's say? Do they like to just appeal to the uh, radial look and sound? Oh, yes, definitely. This engine's actually going on a legal, legal ultralight. Oh, is that right? Okay. Okay, great. And this one's the 42-horsepower version right here? This is the 38 max continuous horsepower. 38 max continuous. Okay, that worked great on a legal legal or a number of these airplanes down here in ultralight. Okay, let's move up to the front of the engine now. Uh, uh, just in in discussion, are you matching? You're the prop guy here, so how? Tell us how that part works and how you join engine prop to airframe. Well, with uh, with this engine, it turns such low RPM. We're going to swing a larger diameter propeller. Okay. And it's going to give us a lot more thrust. All right. And you said these things are are, are torque potent engines, huh? So yeah. you can really make They're that. happy at 2200 RPM. Is that right? So that just it's, it's, it's a fascinating number. Most people are used to 27, 28, 29 on a conventional Lycoming like or Continental or in a Rotax world you're at 5000. So that number sounds unbelievably that's, low to me. And so. that's why we can swing such a large diameter propeller. Okay. Sam, you wanted to add something here? Sure. What I was going to say uh, about your uh, that and uh, what kind of aircraft in Europe these have been uh, flying extensively on uh, biplanes World War One replicas they've been flying on gyroplanes they've been flying on trikes there are all kinds of light sport aircraft so really no limitation then you don't have to no. have some vintage you, airplane to want this you do have to consider your prop diameter because of your ah, landing yeah, yeah. gear right and ground clearance but that's where an expert like Frank can help Okay, so probably not for some airplane that just happens to sit very low to the ground because you need the clearance somehow. So a right. tail dragger would help probably and things right. like that. But right? there might be an alternate propeller solution that'll still let you do it. Okay, great. Well, I tell you what, that's a lot of information about it. I'm sure I've asked a few of the basic questions, but somebody's going to want to get right down in the weeds and ask you some real details that they need to make it all work. And you're still in the process of acquiring some of this knowledge. So where can we go find more about these engines on the web? On the web, it's Werner Motors on Facebook, 
or VernerRadialEngines.com. VernerRadialEngines.com, okay. Yes, sir. And will that lead back to uh, you somehow, or does that Yes, if you look up their dealers for the United States, Frank's listed, and I'm listed as well. Okay, we have a lot of viewers out of the country, too, so it's good that they can go to the central site, but yes, for the sir. many Americans that may want and to check And there's dealers all around the world right Is now. Is there? Okay, excellent. Good. Okay, great. Well, we got the web address. You can find more about all kinds of aircraft on which this engine might work well at ByDanJohnson.com. Thanks for joining Sam, Frank, and myself here in the ultralight area of EAA AirVenture Oshkosh. <laughs>